this is the TradeSite Forex Market Preview and International Economic Data Roadmap for the week beginning Sunday, March 15th, 2015, ending Friday the 20th. Hope you're having a good trading week and month so far. Here's a look at the dollar index. We did get a recycle on our count towards the exhaustion signal, so we're nowhere near a 13 exhaustion now on the dollar index. Uh, that new nine bar startup phase is in effect. If we do roll over, red would be the goal, the target, the red line down there, that static trend line. But meanwhile, there's no reason to say we need to until we get 13 exhaustion, which could be uh, at least a week and a half away at best if the, uh, if the count proceeds uh, in order. So or back to back every day here. So uh, that wasn't a positive for anybody who was looking for a reversal signal. It means the dollar is still free to go higher. Here's a look at the euro dollar. Uh, same thing happened there. Uh, so we have a new count proceeding here on the euro in the week that I've been away. There's the pound now making new lows as well against the dollar. There's the Aussie not breaking really down uh, like the Aussie, uh, like the uh, pound and the euro are. Here's the New Zealand also holding up a little bit better. Uh, pound yen is the key cross pair we like to look at. Nine bars down for a new startup phase if that gives us some sort of reversal of the green static trend line above would be the target. All right, let's go to 30-minute bars and take a look at the action from the last week start to finish. Here's a, a look at it. So we basically had some downward progress on the euro dollar. Uh, we had about 400 pips of range for the whole week, and uh, Monday was a little flat, but every other day saw some range and some action, enough to uh, get us green easily for the week. Here's a look at the pound uh, dollar. Uh, high to low is about 450 pips almost, 440. Uh, on this one, and again, Monday, here Monday and Tuesday were very flat. Wednesday started the move and, uh, you know, basically fell apart by 400 pips from Wednesday to Friday. Uh, so we had some nice trades there as well. All right, let's take a look at uh, the economic data that's coming out this week and get ourselves geared up for that so we can make good decisions and be aware of uh, when key news is coming out. So on Sunday, we've got uh, the right move HPI housing price index out of the UK. New motor vehicle sales out of Australia. Going into Monday, PPI and retail sales out of Switzerland. Um, the United States in the morning has Empire State Manufacturing Index, Capacity Utilization, Industrial Production. We've got the CB Leading Index out of the UK. We've got the Housing Market Index out of the US. Uh, we've got tick long-term purchases out of the US. Monetary minutes from the last uh, Bank of Australia meeting at 8.30 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, then you got a statement from the Bank of Japan and their press conference. you got a rate announcement there. Uh, Tuesday morning, 6 a.m. out of Europe, we've got German Zoo Economic Sentiment, final CPI for all of Europe, uh, Zoo Economic Sentiment for all of Europe, employment change, and final core CPI. Uh, then U.S. and Canada, Canada manufacturing sales, U.S. building permits and housing starts. Uh, that night, New Zealand's got their current account and their GDT price index. Australia's got their MI leading index, Japan's trade balance, Bank of Japan monthly report going into Wednesday. Italian trade balance, UK's got their unemployment rate and stuff that goes with that. Got Switzerland's zoo economic expectations, trade balance out of Europe, German 10-year bond auction, got wholesale sales out of Canada, annual budget release out of the UK, crude oil inventories out of the US. Uh, we've got a Fed announcement, Fed rate announcement this week. So we've got a two-day Fed meeting from Tuesday into Wednesday with the announcement at 2 p.m. Eastern time. That's going to slow Wednesday down a bit. So we'll be half size ahead of uh, going into when Tuesday night, going into Wednesday, and then the press conference from that meeting at uh, 2:30 p.m. GDP out of New Zealand that night, RBA bulletin out of Australia. We go to Thursday, uh, all industries activity out of Japan in the wee hours of the morning over here. Seco economic forecasts out of Switzerland. Then their trade balance, their uh, Swiss National Bank LIBOR rate and press conference. So they've got a rate announcement there after the surprise move they made last month. Uh, ECB economic bulletin out of Europe. 10-year bond auction out of the UK. Uh, we've got uh, the EU economic supplement day one on Thursday. Unemployment claims, that's the weekly number here in the US and current account, then the Philly Fed, CB leading index. Natty gas, visitor arrivals out of New Zealand. Monetary policy minute, meeting minutes out of Japan. Credit card spending out of New Zealand. Australia's uh, Governor Stevens speaks at 10, 10 p.m. Eastern time, Thursday night here in the US. German PPI going into Friday, current account, out of Europe, public sector net borrowing out of the UK, second day of the EU Economic Summit. 
Canada, their CPI and retail sales data, and that is it for the week. So none of our big three, but we do have Fed announce our Fed meeting. So that's a two-day meeting. That will be the holding point for the week. So we'll be full size every night except Tuesday night. We will be making calls as usual, trying to help you make money. Charts brought to you by eSignal. If you do have any questions, feel free to stop by our lab and we can answer them for you. Have a great trading week.